Hello, and a warm welcome back to my little YouTube channel. I hope you are doing well, are in good spirits, are safe and healthy wherever you are. Well, I wanted to share with you just uh, some of my favourite databases for internal assessments. I have mentioned them in previous videos. I thought it'd be worth just sharing what I'm thinking at this moment in time. So things have moved on in the world of databases. So there are lots of schools, bless you all, are still stuck um, in lockdown or distance learning. I will say that a number of questions I've had from teachers make me very grateful that I have discovered and I'm now a, a major exponent of uh, celebrating database and simulation internal assessments, which work every time. Okay, so here are my favourite ones, Molcalc, NIST, PubChem, ChemSpider, Webmo and John2 is fantastic site at the bottom of the thing. We're going to have a look here for the next 10 minutes, it's a quick video. Uh, Molcalc was new to me, may not have been new to you. Uh, Molcalc is up here and Molcalc is um, provided by, I think it's the University of Copenhagen. So let's put something into the search. You can go up to 10 atoms. I think 10 atoms is the limit for your organic molecule. You are restricted a little bit by uh, complexity. If it's overly complex, if it's overly substituted, if you've got difunctionality, different functional groups, that may be a problem. What's really nice from a teaching and learning point of view is we get a three-dimensional molecule. This is nothing new. We found it in other packages. But what's really nice about this is I just think the clarity of the uh, presentation is really nice. It's very simple to use when zoom in, zoom out. I can type in any molecule up to 10 carbon atoms at the top. I think it's mostly organic, but you know, try it with other things. Bottom left down here, calculate the properties. My favorite button ever, ready to calculate quantum mechanical properties. Indeed. Yes, I am. Okay. So there it goes. Indeed, I am now or well, it is now calculating the quantum mechanical properties of ethanol, our CH3, CH2OH. It drops you into this screen. Oh, I forgot to mention, it's totally free. Totally free. Gives us thermodynamics. I get the enthalpies, the trans translational, rotational, vibrational, and the total enthalpy. That's useful. We can have a look at a sequence or a molecular series as we know. We get the more physical chemistry aspects, the heat capacity, the Gibbs free energy, the free, uh, free energy heat of formation, and we get the entropic values here, but we actually get the things that feed into the entropic values. So what influences entropy for a sequence of halogen or alkanes would be a reasonable thing to inspire students as they're going through. Vibrational frequencies, who's not going to be satisfied looking at that for five minutes? And we get our molecular orbitals, which I'm not going to go into today. If you understand MO theory, please be my guest and have a go at some calculations there. Now, the most important thing that I found for the use of the uh, Molcalc sequence is the fact that we are able to look at polarity and solvation atoms. So here we have, and I love these, this is, you know, this is models of the atom. Uh, we do balls and sticks and we do Lewis structures. But this is probably as close to reality as we're going to get. It's very nature of science. We can look at the uh, probability of the electron distributions around each of the atoms. Clearly, oxygen to lone pairs of electrons, so the more pronounced red is going to be more negative, blue is going to be less negative or more positive, same thing. That's very nice. I can look at the dipole of the molecule. This is the first time I've seen a package, you may be well with others, well, we can actually see the dipole positive end is on that central carbon atom going towards this electron density here, which is the negative part of the ethanol molecule. So for teaching polarity, which students often struggle with because you're juggling, as we know, symmetry, electronegativity, and imagining a three-dimensional structure in the mind is easy for some kids, less easy for other kids. I think this is a great visualization. Not only is it a great visualization, it also gives me solvation energy, the non-polar and polar solvation energies. Please research those at your wish. And beautifully, it gives me the surface area. Now, surface area will come from a few of the other databases I'm going to show you here today, as will the dipole. And it gives me the dipole in Dubai units. Okay, we can convert Dubai units in, into different uh, values. 
and we can use that for our IA. We can look at the halogen substitution and look at the dipole moments and the surface area of the molecule. And you know what? It works every time. Okay. So I think this is just absolutely fabulous. I can't get over the fact that it's free, the functionality, the ease of use, and the incorporation of both the uh, energetics, thermodynamics, and the physical chemistry aspects of any molecule you can care to think of. Okay, so that number one, molecalc, is my favorite one at this moment in time. So here we are, Dubai units, polarity, surface area, visualization of the electrostatic potential map, just absolutely brilliant. Okay, the NIST web book. NIST is a well-known database in here. If we can go into search, we can have a look and hopefully I will search for the same molecule just so we can see how we can actually augment some of the properties and see what each database will give us. Now, NIST, I've said, NIST is primarily for energetic solubility, Henry's law. Indeed, it is. And uh, back to NIST, there we go. And yes, here we are, we can have the gas phase, condensed phase, thermochemistry data, phase changes, Henry's law, as I've said. You get the spectra, you get the GC, the MS, that's all very nice. Um, and you can click into these. Let's have a look at the gas phase, thermochemistry data. Um, very rich source of data. Um, it gives us um, a range of, this is an average of nine values here. And there's the individual data points that I can click on for ethanol. And I can look at the data that went into that and it's properly referenced. So this is immediately, this is our uncertainty, isn't it? So entropy of formation of a sequence of any class of compounds in organic chemistry will be a great routine for your internal assessments. Okay, we've got pressure values, we've got the references at the bottom, the student can look at those. And this is a fantastically rich area that students can explore. Henry's law here, it's about dilution. Uh, this is water solutions, very uh, straightforward equation here. Uh, Henry's law is a constant for solubility. We can look up solubility tables. There's a solubility simulation on uh, Chem Reacts and on Chem Collective. You can triangulate that data between this site, Chem Collective, Chem Reacts, and look at the uncertainty from there. I think that's great. So NIST is a, a wonderful place to begin and get students just thinking about the sort of data that they can begin to collect for their internal assessment. Clearly phase changes, triple points are beyond the IB syllabus, but as I keep saying, they're a wonderful thing to incorporate because they are just a bit beyond the IB syllabus. We've got enthalpy of vaporization at different temperature with increasing temperature with full references and comments and based on where it's from. So here's the assumptions, here's your control variables. We've got the equation for enthalpy of vaporization. I'm sure any student can understand that and how to derive it and how to apply it. Enthalpy of fusion, uh, entropy of fusion, entropy of phase transition. I find this a wonderful site to get students into databases, thinking about databases and potentially what could lead on to a research question from looking at this database. PubChem is another favorite. PubChem is up here. Let's stay with our ethanol. Let's go into here. What do we get? Well, we get quite a bit from here, don't we? So there, there are 728,608 compounds here. We get the synonyms but we also get the summary and I've hit the, this is not ethanol. Let's have a look, 192,000 substances for ethanol. So these all have ethanol in the title. So let's have ethanol here. Here we go. So we've got the 3D and the 2D structure. Um, just like we had in MoCalc, we can play around with the structure in space. What I no normally go for here are the chemical and physical properties on the right-hand side. Why? Well, it gives me my molecular weight. Okay. Um, it gives me my topological surface area in angstroms. I saw angstroms in MoCalc in here. So I had here the surface area 216.37 angstroms squared. But when I go into Pub Chem, which is here, 20.2 angstroms squared. But well, this is the topological polar surface area. What does that mean? Research it, have a look. But immediately, half range method, you've got your uncertainty on two values, which is so hard to find often when we're looking at database and simulation internal assessments. 
So we have surface area, we have a measure of complexity of the molecule. Maybe students can research that. And clearly we also have the normal things like boiling points, uh, uh, melting points, and getting kids to, to look in here, even in this one, let's have a look at the melting point. One of the things that students struggle with with databases is the uh, contradictory units. We've got degrees C, we've got degrees Fahrenheit. We've got 114, 114.1, 0.14, 0.1, and we've got 173.4 minus degrees Fahrenheit, 173 degrees Fahrenheit here. Students will often be confused by this. Why does nobody know? Why does nobody agree? What a great starting point to talk about different systems, different control variables, different pairs of socks. Um, but what a great place to get an uncertainty for, for something as simple and fundamental as a melting point. And this carries on. The flash points will also have range. Solubility has a massive range and a massive um, variation in, in units. So a milligrams per litre looks like moles there. A milligrams per litre, milligrams per milliliter. So there's lots of conversion that the kids can be doing just using pub chem. And this again is a great place to begin a journey exploring a database. Chem spider, everyone who doesn't like chem spider, everyone likes chem spider. So here we go. Why do we like chem spider? What did Mr. Midgley say? I like it for general physical chemical properties and for spectra. So I've thrown in ethanol, let's see what we get. Um, it's given the molecular formula here, C2H6O. Click into the ID and hopefully we'll get some rich areas of the chemistry. Here are the properties under here. So we can scroll down, I was just thinking about it. Uh, properties, there we go. So here's another site where we're getting flash points and boiling points and melting points. But again, look at the range just in the melting point here, minus 130, minus 144, minus 100, minus 90, and then some in degrees Fahrenheit. A great place to get kids to build a spreadsheet, look at the conversion factors, and try to explain why is there such a range? And kids do get perplexed. Why don't we all agree? Why don't we all agree? Uh, log P, that's the partition coefficient between the blood-brain barrier, um, aqueous solvents and optimal. I had a student do that as an IA. It's a fantastic internal assessment. But there you go, chem spider, play with it, look at the uh, spectrum and physical properties, and it's absolutely fantastic for those two things. WebMo, I have separate videos on WebMo. Um, I'll briefly, if you've not seen them, go onto my channel. There's three or four videos on using WebMo. I think it's a fantastic resource. And just as a quick reminder, let's go in, create, let's have a look at our ethanol that we've been doing. Um, I don't need to check my passwords. I know that the username is guest and the password is guest. So here we have uh, our building screen. So let's go, let's build some ethanol. Still whirling pizza of doom at the top of the screen. And here we have carbon, carbon, periodic table, oxygen, O, and let's just put it together and then clean up and add our hydrogens. There is hopefully my CH3, CH2OH. It doesn't look very happy. Uh, now it looks more happy. And we can look it up. We can go to the databases here and all the ones that I've mentioned, PubChem, ChemSpider and NIST so far, are present. Now Sigma Aldrich, that's mostly for, for purchasing some ethanol. And then clearly these are for the NMR and the IR and the spec data. Okay. So WebMo is still a fantastic resource. It's bigger than the purposes of this video. And then finally, of course, the saving the best for last is uh, John Chewy's uh, site here, john-hk-next-tailwind. You can see the link at the top of the screen. If you go into here, here's my ethanol. Let's change it. Let's make some propan one. Oh, it's quite forgiving on the uh, input. If you double click it, that tends to work better. There we go, propan one all. Um, we can look at the same things that we got on NIST and PubChem and ChemSpider, but this uses or harvests from Thermo as well. So here we've got the dipole moment of 1.55 on John Chewy's site. And if we go back to the mole calc site, we do a part as 1.69. So 1.55 using Thermo and 1.69 using Mulcalc. 
What a great way to get the range, and it's fantastic. Log P, I mentioned Log P, Water Optimal Partition Coefficient. That was on two of the previous websites. Augment it with this data. You've got the beginnings of a great IA. And then all the thermodynamics, the Gibbs free energy, enthalpy, entropy, phase transitions, vaporization, sublimation, fusion. We've got the lower value, the higher value, again, half range method, the lower value, 1845.1, the higher value, 2021.1. Midpoint in between those, the medium value, that's plus or minus half of the distance between those two. You've got your uncertainty on your molar enthalpy of combustion. So it's about getting as many sources as you can to get the same amount, uh, to, to get some data so that the kids can use it and get decent error treatments from it. And just showing them around how to use these one, two, three, four, five, six sites will inspire them to generate their own fantastic research questions, in my humble opinion. Okay, hope you enjoyed that little whistle stop tour. Smash that subscribe button, like, comment. Thanks very much indeed. Have a great day. Stay safe out there, kids. Thank you.